In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the system settings of EDIUS and some of the changes that you can make that will affect the background functions and features of the program. You can find them up here in the menu uh, tab uh, under settings and uh, system settings. And uh, we'll go through them. We might not uh, go into detail on every one, but I just want to point out some of the, the main things and uh, give a little explanation of what they do. Let's uh, open up application. We'll see there's a number of options there and uh, start taking a look at these. Capture. This relates to uh, capturing tape into your system. And I don't know that too many people are doing that anymore, but when I do have to pull out some old tape from the shelves and uh, capture some tape. Uh, I usually like to have the confirm file name at capture uh, checked and also before capture. And um, uh, EDIUS by default in version 8 here looks like they have all of the options checked that I like and so we'll leave it at that. Check for updates. Do you want EDIUS every time you start the program to check whether or not an update is available? I usually like to leave this checked. Um, um, EDIUS is pretty good about offering you the option to shut that off for a month before they bother you again with that. Uh, if an update is available and you're not at a point where you want to risk doing an update, uh, say you're in the middle of a big project and you don't want to take the chance that something might go wrong in the update and you miss your deadline, well, you can say no to the update and you can also check a box usually that says don't bother me again for another month or another 30 days. File export. Well, I usually leave that checked. Playback. All right, as I'm working with uh, EDIUS, if I am working with some very uh, difficult uh, complex timelines with several layers and maybe some 4K footage in there. Sometimes EDIUS will reach a point where it cannot play every existing frame in a clip in real time. And they're asking you, do you want the play line to stop to alert you to the fact that a frame has been dropped? I usually leave that unchecked. Um, I'm not, not too worried about frame drops because when we go to export, it's going to render every frame and include every frame in the export, and that's the most important thing. Playback buffer size. In EDIUS 8, as we take a look at this, we can see that uh, we can, uh, depending on your system, I guess, uh, go as high as 8 gigabytes as far as a playback buffer size. And what this means is that uh, you can select how many uh, megabytes or gigabytes you want EDIUS to fill up uh, in advance of your play line uh, or where your, play, your timeline cursor is playing. How much memory do you want it to fill up, you know, looking down the timeline, fill up in advance, ready to play uh, even before your timeline cursor gets there. By default, it is set to 512. If you've got a fairly recent computer with lots of RAM, you might want to change that uh, to something greater. Let's maybe try 4 gigabytes and uh, see how that does. Also, if you're working with a project that does have several layers and um, you might be reaching uh, a buffer that is emptying out, and uh, you're not able to play in real time and you'd like to see that in real time, you can try uh, changing the amount of frames that is going to fill up before your play starts. Keep in mind that the more frames that you ask it to buffer up before you start the playback, uh, the bigger or longer the delay will be after you hit the space bar before it plays. Now 15 frames on fast computers probably you won't even notice that much difference but it may help EDIUS to fill up the buffer prior to you starting and actually end up being able to play more in real time once it gets going if you are working on a complex timeline. So if you're finding that your buffer is running out and that you're dropping a lot of frames, stuttering, you might want to try increasing the amount of frames before it starts to play here in system settings. Okay, profile. If you have more than one person working on your computer, you might want to add a new profile here and give the person a name. Let's give them Bob. And that way, 
each time Bob starts a project on your system, he can select his profile settings. And that way, any of the personal preferences that he's made in the way of system settings, in the way of uh, user settings, keyboard shortcuts, all of those things uh, will be unique to his profile and will remember all of the settings that he uh, chooses to make uh, as he customizes the program for, for himself. And then when you sit down, uh, you can go back to your personal profile. And this option is presented each time you start a new project. By default, uh, you probably noticed when you started to run the program the first time that your name showed up. And you might have wondered, well, how did Edius know that I, I was going to be a user in, and, and set up a profile for me? I believe that um, when the program first starts, it takes a look at the user that is identified as being the one that uh, logged into uh, Windows. Um, the program. So when, when you started up your computer and you logged in uh, as yourself, that's uh, what Edius takes a look at to start its first user. All right, uh, project presets. Now uh, this shows all of the presets that we created the first time we ran the program. Well, here's the place that you want to go if you want to delete any of these project presets, change them, add new ones, for example, um, if you want to fine-tune uh, some of the settings in any one of these presets to be uh, something that works better for you than what Grass Valley chose when they set up the presets, here's your opportunity to go in and change that. Uh, just as an example here, you remember we uh, opened up our first project using this preset here, the Full HD. If we should open that now, and take a look at the default settings, we'll see that even though we made a bunch of changes over here in the setup panel, that none of those were remembered by Edius. And so each time I go to start a new project, if I use the, the settings just as they came from Edius, I'm going to have to hit the customize button and go in each and every time and change this to the way that I, I like to have it. However, if I go into the, this uh, project presets and make these changes here and save that, then uh, Edius will remember my personal preferences the way I like to start a program. I usually like to have two video tracks to start, like to have no, uh, don't like to have uh, title tracks and four audio tracks to start with. That's fine. I like that. That's fine. And now, uh, as I hit OK, Edius will remember my changes that I have made to that preset. So just keep that in mind as you work with the Grass Valley presets. Unless you go in and make your specific customizations here, Edius will not remember your personal uh, preferences on these presets. All right, uh, render, render options. Here uh, you can choose uh, rendering options. Uh, they're all checked by default. They're fine. Let's move on. See what else we've got here. All right, this has to do with when you are transferring uh, media from the source browser uh, to your project. You can choose to have it either in a project folder or some other folder that you uh, might want to choose for that. Uh, usually, I just like to leave that into the project folder so that all of the media that I import into a particular project will actually end up on the same drive as the project and that makes it easier for backup purposes or for having to go and uh, maybe make some changes to the project down the road. Everything is all on one drive. All right, um, well, some of these other uh, options here have to do with the type of hardware that you might have connected to your system. I happen to have an EDIUS card that I can choose to use if I want to send my signal out to a broadcast monitor to uh, do color correction and that type of thing. And so that is an option. If you have one of those cards in your computer and you're wondering why it's not showing up uh, on your monitor, it's probably this little checkbox here. It comes by default uh, to just uh, have the generic uh, Firewire output. All right, effects. Well, this again has to do with how you may want to work with uh, uh, After Effects or other plugins that you may purchase, third-party software, 
And so if you have purchased some software and you're wondering how to uh, connect that into your system, you can probably take a look under effects, importer, exporter. As you are working with different types of uh, media, there may be some options here to set some settings based on the type of media that you're importing into EDIUS, whether it's from an audio CD or uh, some other digital file formats. Here uh, is a place that you might want to check if things are not coming in quite the way that you thought they should. There might be some options here to check out. So, uh, for example, if you're working with red footage, you may want to choose um, the type of preview quality that uh, you're working with as you try and edit that footage. And uh, based on the speed of your system, you might want to try different options uh, to maximize or minimize the uh, stuttering <laughs> that you might want to deal with as you're working with red footage or some of these other raw formats. This is all kind of new to uh, EDIUS 8, and so I'm going to be kind of learning along with you guys uh, about some of these things as we go along. But it's interesting to see them showing up here in EDIUS 8. Here's one that uh, is at least familiar to me uh, from previous programs. When you capture uh, an image from your timeline and save it as a still, you can choose whether you want to save it as an interlaced frame or capture it as an interlaced frame, or just an upper field or lower field. You can also adjust as to what file format it's going to automatically save to. I usually like to save these to TIFF files to get a high quality still when I'm capturing a still from the timeline. So each time you make changes, you should hit apply. Input controller is uh, again uh, relating to additional hardware that you might have connected to your system and since i don't have a jog device or a fader these aren't showing up okay well i believe that that does it for our system settings in our next tutorial we'll take a look at user settings and uh, some of you <laughs> might find this a little bit tedious to go through all of these settings and you might be anxious to get right down to the edit uh, start uh, learning how to uh, edit your, your videos. However, um, the next lesson, it's important not to skip it because as we go through the user settings, I'm going to make some uh, suggestions as to some of the uh, settings that I would like you to set on your computer so that they match uh, my settings so that when I perform a function and show it to you on my system, and you try and do it on yours, it's going to hopefully do the same thing. Uh, and it's important to have our settings synced up. So even though it uh, might be a little bit tedious as we work through some of these settings, I think it's important that you not skip over the next lesson. So we'll catch you down the road.